Hello, everyone. My name is Anjali Gaddy. I am an IACAC member, and I have the privilege of uh, facilitating this presentation for Hampshire College. We have Bernadette and Kiara available, so um, we hope you enjoy this presentation from them. Hi there, welcome. So nice to have you join us. Um, I am gonna do a screen share so that you can see my, um, my screen. Actually, I will ask if we can have, oh, never mind, there it is. It was not coming up. Um, and I will share this for you. Um, Hampshire College is a small liberal arts college in New England. We have currently about 600 students and we are planning on increasing our student body again up to about eight or 900 over the next few years. And um, I would say we have three really important things that make Hampshire very different than most schools. And that is our divisional system, that we are part of a five college consortium, and additionally that we offer narrative evaluations. Um, Kiara, do you wanna do any intro before I dive into Div 1? Nope, just that my name is Kiara, I use she, her pronouns. I'm um, an assistant director of admissions at Hampshire. I'm also a recent graduate. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to answer questions from multiple perspectives. Excellent, thank you. And I neglected to say, I am also an assistant director of admissions at Hampshire. So I'm gonna dive right into the um, divisional system. We have our four years broken up into three sections. There is Div 1, which is the first year, Div 2, which is years two and three, and then Div 3, which is year four. Um, we've also actually developed these new learning collaboratives over this past year. And the learning collaboratives really allow for a broader perspective and an interconnection between students and faculty and the way we look at solving problems. And so those learning collaboratives are called environments and change, justice and injustice, media and technology, and time and narrative. And the idea behind these is that each of these areas are going to be looking at problems in the world and how do we solve those problems. And solving those problems are never going to happen in just one area. It is often going to be more of a um, collaborative effort. And that's the way those first year seminars that I'll talk about in a minute are actually um, both presented um, taught and the way you'll be looking at them. So I'm going to dive into Div 1 here. Um, as I was saying, Division 1 is your first year. You have the option of taking, or the requirement actually, of taking two seminars, one the first semester, one the second semester. Other than that, you actually get to choose whichever classes you'd like to take at that point. Um, you do not need to worry about requirements the same way as many colleges do. We actually want you to take a really broad range of classes. Use this as your time of liberal arts understanding. Um, dabble, explore. You might take a history class, you might take a math class, you might take an arts class um, in addition to your seminar. And it's a way to really allow you to explore who you are as a learner while also exploring what um, content might be optional or interesting to you. Um, during Div 1, the only other requirements we have of you is that you are um, participating in something that we call Campus Engaged Learning, also affectionately known as get out of your dorm room, do something fun, participate in campus community. It's only a 40 hour requirement for the entire year, really easy to um, have that requirement met fairly quickly. Um, one thing that Hampshire is very keen on making sure all students feel supported. And so we use a advising system that allows you to have support and a scaffolded system to whichever extent is best for you. You might choose to meet with your advisor once a week, some others meet with their advisors once a month, and some really only a few times a semester, but it's up to you. And the idea is that your advisor guides you through the process, 
they help you create your own roadmap of how you want to explore your learning opportunities. Um, the other thing that is really wonderful during your first year, um, which will continue throughout your four years at Hampshire, is that you get to participate in um, self-evaluations as well as getting feedback from your professors that are not just an A, a B, a C, or a D. You're not a number or a letter to us. That's not what we want your grade to be either. So we actually offer you narrative evaluations. This screen is a little bit hard to see. It's not the best option um, on a small screen, but this is actually just one page of about 20 to 30 that offer um, ideas about the way you are as a learner, how you've participated in a class, um, the way you have taken in the material, how you've interacted with the material, how you've interacted with your peers within the class. And often it's very constructive, usually noting all the things that you've done well and then suggesting ideas in how you can further your learning, how you can um, grow as a learner, and what you can do to really take ownership of the information you're learning, as well as the way in which you participate with that. Um, Kira, do you want to answer, uh, add anything to that for me? Have I? Yeah, um, I think that one of the best things about the narrative evals is it allows for this space um, to really emphasize what Hampshire is about. Um, and this allows for students who come to take the class and they're all taking the same class to run with that class in a different way. So just because you're all sitting in that one class doesn't mean that you're learning um, the exact same product in the end because you're adding your questions, you're building on that knowledge, you're not just retaining information and regurgitating it back, you're actually expanding on that. So these narrative evals allow for more fluidity on what the class and product is for each student, which I really love. Excellent, thanks. Um, most uh, transcripts that you get from Hampshire College actually are about 20 to 30 pages. If I said that already, I'm sorry. I'm just making sure I'm ticking all my boxes. Um, but most college transcripts are only a page or two. And instead of just a page, we actually give you a mini booklet so that as you're moving on either to advanced um, degrees or if you're getting a job, really um, gives the opportunity for a future employer or a graduate school to get to know who you are from start to finish during your time at Hampshire and really shows your growth. So what you may have done uh, in a traditional school with a letter grade of an A or a B in your first year might actually be very different than what an A or a B would look like in your fourth year. And a letter grade is just not going to um, really demonstrate who you are as a learner. And one other thing that it does is it removes competition between students. So rather than our students discussing, you got an A, I got an A minus, why did that happen? Our students are actually discussing the content and, um, and themselves as a learner, what they take away from it, how they want to continue to learn about it, what questions they've developed because of it. So that is probably one of our um, most intriguing aspects when I sit with our students, I never ever hear them even discuss anything about their narrative evaluation unless they're really proud of it. I know that among students they discuss it more, but um, most often it's if somebody has said something funny or poignant within that, but they're not sitting around complaining about it the way most students might complain about grades. Division two, Kiara, you're on. Well, thank you for that. Um, kind of, this is just how I prepare to talk about Div 2 is kind of talking about that transition out of Div 1 because it replicates itself in multiple years here at Hampshire. So as Bernadette said, you kind of have these narrative evaluations and you have an advisor. At the end of your Div 1 year, you put them all together in a portfolio. It might look different for different advisors. Um, mine was an actual binder portfolio with one piece of work from each class I was in and the narrative eval that went along with that. Um, and then you also write a small retrospective that really talks about how all of your classes connected and all the learning you did over that whole year and a little bit about your campus engaged learning um, because we believe here at Hampshire that learning goes on um, 
outside of the classroom as well is just as relevant. So after you've handed in that portfolio, your advisor will say, yay, you've passed and you enter into Div 2. So your Div 2 is your second and third year um, and you get to pick um, two advisors. You can keep your one Div 1 advisor or you can get two new advisors. Um, it's really up to you. Um, and so the first advisor is assigned based on what class um, seminar you were interested in. But Div 2, because your mind might have changed or you might have made the networks now um, with teachers that are more into the area of study that you're interested in, you get to make that initial connection and reach out and say, hey, I would love to have you on my committee. And they'll be like, of course, like I would love to support you in this. Um, and so the really great part about that is you're already developing skills on how to network um, and be engaged with instead of them just coming and lecturing at you, but they're actually in dialogue with you about, well, what's your educational pathway gonna look like? Um, so with that, you then in your beginning um, semester of Div 2, you have a conversation and you start crafting a Div 2 contract. And um, because at Hampshire, our curriculum is not preset, it's really about what interests you this contract serves as kind of like a, a loose curriculum that you've developed with your advisors about what are classes that I'm really interested in, what are classes that I really think are relevant and um, to the questions that I'm asking to, to discover or new knowledge that I'm trying to create. And Div 2 um, is the years that you're really just gathering as much information and research as possible. Um, and I think that this is really important because it's going to build on what you've done in Div 1, but then it also scaffolds for what you're going to do in Div 3. So it's getting a surplus of information as you can. Um, and so the important part of this year is expanding not just within Hampshire, but we have the Five College Consortium, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and this is also the time that we tend to have students pursue study abroad, internships, field study, um, and that, again, that learning outside of the classroom component um, or learning in classrooms all around the world, whatever intrigues you and what um, will feed your bigger questions that you're guiding your education through at Hampshire. Um, so the requirement end of things of Div 2, so there's another CEL requirement. Instead of um, campus engaged learning, it's called community engaged learning. Um, and again, it's 40 hours for the two years. Um, and again, it's, it's similar to where we're getting you out of your room, but we're now getting you out into the community and doing a little bit more vigorous work that, um, that matters and is applying the learning that's happening in the classroom um, into real world situations and really um, trying to transition you into um, using your learning, using who you're, what you're interested in, who you want to be um, into that community work. Um, and it can be volunteering, it can be helping um, Div 3 students on their projects, um, things like that, um, and field studies, pretty much anything. Um, so that's really great. Brenna, do you mind going to the next slide for me? Great. Um, so like I said before, this is the time where you're expanding into other realms. And so the Five College Consortium is a great way to expand and gather even more information. So Hampshire is a small liberal arts college in um, Western Mass in Amherst. Um, and we are so lucky to be within proximity of four other colleges. Um, and they're within 20 minutes. So there is Hampshire College, of course, Amherst College, Mount Holyoke College, Smith College, and UMass Amherst. And the really great thing about that is it allows you access to over 6,000 courses. Um, and that's really I don't know, fruitful for a small college because we have great courses and we want you to take the courses at Hampshire because they're different and they're awesome. The professors are great. However, we do know that you might be interested in something that we might not have that semester. We just don't have the teacher that year. Um, and so this provides you the space to go and find that class at any of the other colleges. Um, and that's not just in the classroom, right? So we also allow you to do clubs. Um, the only thing really you can't do at the other colleges is play a varsity sport and you can't dorm there because you're a Hampshire student. Um, so it's really great because you can do uh, classes, you can do clubs, you can eat at the other five colleges, which is great, or four colleges, sorry, um, because they all have great food offering. Um, and it again makes it ex uh, accessible. So if you have a class and you need to get lunch, you're not worried about, well, packing lunch or having to go back to campus in order because only your card works at only your college. That's not the case. They really thought this through. 
We also have an amazing free bus system and the bus system runs on schedule with the the courses that the college students have and it goes to all of the colleges around 15 to 30 minutes there's a bus that's running to one of the colleges um, and it's really great um, it also allows you to access some of um, the local shops and food and things like that um, and the other great thing is access to resources right so not only do you have access to our, our libraries, but you have access to the libraries across the four other colleges. Um, and it's really just a, a great feature that we have in um, buddying up with them. Burnett, do you wanna add anything to the Five College Consortium? Um, I would just say that talking about the libraries, there are well over 15 libraries between the colleges. I actually think the number's over 20, but I really want to confirm that. Um, you have somewhere between 10 to 15 million volumes of things that you can access and you can get things delivered to the Hampshire College Library, usually within 12 to 24 hours, if it's at one of the other colleges. It really makes it easy. Um, you don't even have to get on the bus to go to those other colleges. Um, and the other thing is the clubs. There's somewhere between 600 to 800 clubs that you can join on those college on those other campuses. You can also start a club on one of those. So it's a really nice way to build community outside of the Hampshire campus. So you get this very small, um, very intimate New England college feel, but then you have access to these other colleges and between the five colleges, there's approximately 35,000 students um, throughout the five college area, which makes it really vibrant in a cultural way off campus. And it's, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. No, it's one of my favorite features of Hampshire. Um, I always like to say a little story about how we had one student who was going to nationals for um, a rec event for sports. And we just didn't have um, the means to have our whole team go. And so financially, we had some money, but not enough for everyone to go. And so Mount Holyoke was like, no worries. She can come with us. They cheered her on the whole time, supported her. Um, so it just like is a nice, warm feeling to know that even though we are the colleges, even sometimes we compete against each other, we really do um, bond and stick together when it comes to nationally like we are the five colleges we're proud of that we love each other um, and there's so much cross class taking that you're not gonna go through hampshire even if you take only hampshire classes you'll meet somebody somewhere who's at the one of the five colleges so it's really great um, but kind of moving along um, something that is also really important about div 2 is the study abroad i know that's a huge point for a lot of um college students that traveling is a huge way to learn and it's a great way to again make those connections and redefine community and just make um, cultural differences and connections so we do have a great global education office um, and they are fantastic about finding resources um, if we don't have a, an established program they've also got, gotten really creative about people creating programs and field studies and independent studies um, but also, again, with the five colleges, if there's a, an established um, study abroad program at UMass, we might be able to find a way to have you go ahead and join that study abroad program. Um, and I think Bernadette knows a little bit more about the study abroad, so I'm going to turn it over to her for a few minutes. Um, one of the best things, I really jumped ahead to uh, Division Three there, sorry. Um, one of the best things about the study abroad program, even though you, we may not have the study abroad program that you're most interested in, although we do have, and this is only a sample of them, um, Havana, Cuba, which is incredibly popular. There's even a um, seminar that leads up to that because there's such a huge interest in the arts and the culture. And then um, Germany, New Zealand, uh, Australia, I can't remember them all right now, but there's a handful that we are um, sponsoring. And then in addition, our Global Education Office is very happy to help you if you find another um, study abroad that you're interested in, they will help you with all of the paperwork, all of the necessities. And one of the best things that Hampshire does is we actually reduce our tuition 
during the time that you're in on your study abroad. So many colleges actually ask you to pay most or all of your regular tuition, and then you have to add the study abroad on top of that. And so it can be really costly, and Hampshire has worked as hard as they can um, as an institution to create an equitable opportunity so that students uh, have access and almost 35% of our students actually participate in study abroad and, and that's a fairly high number um, and with that making it uh, feasible financially makes it something that as I said many of our students are able to access. Great, thank you. Um, so yeah, as Bernadette said, we really try to find creative ways. I know Hampshire's huge on grants and grant writing. Um, pretty much if um, Hampshire doesn't like to say no. So if you have found a way and you've articulated well what your plan is and it's where your education path is taking you, they're going to do everything they can to support that and foster that. Um, so kind of moving along. Um, so you're going to do the same thing where you make a portfolio and again it might look different for different students depending on what they're studying um, but more than likely they will ask for a piece of um, something that you're proud of from each class usually a piece of writing um, an eval from each class and then you're going to do another retrospective which will tie in even more i know i said it a little bit in div one but they really emphasize this out of classroom learning in your retrospective for your div two where it could be the volunteer work you did when you went home over jan term it could be do uh, an internship or a camp that you worked at um and you just wrote in a journal every day and like just including as much as you can that has scaffolded into your um or folded into your studies um during div two after you've handed in that portfolio Again, they'll say, yay, you've passed and you're going to enter Div 3. Now, Div 3 is one of those years that we're really known for because it's um, it, uh, it almost mirrors a, a thesis like a master's thesis like process um, and it's really unique to Hampshire um, and I, I love it. I'm a recent graduate, so I just completed my Div 3 this past year um, and it's a really fruitful and unique experience. So. Div three is what you've been working for the whole time. And there's two requirements and then the majority of your time is spent really researching, investigating the questions that um, interest you. And we'll get into what I mean by research because it can look like very different things. Um, so the two requirements are two advanced learning objectives. And that can range from being a TA in a class to taking a Div 3 seminar, a grad level class at one of the other colleges or at Hampshire. Um, it really is an advanced learning activity. Um, some students have um, gotten it written off as doing not just a TA ship, but also like a choreography assistant, just anything that is um, not your typical class and is really challenging you academically in a certain type of way. So those are your two requirements. Um, and again, you have your div committee, so you can either keep your committee from div two, you can change them out, you can change one. Again, it's whoever's gonna serve you best, serve you best in your educational pathway. Um, and again, you're gonna set up, you're gonna set up your contract around those two other learning objectives. Um, and this contract again is a, is a curriculum for you. And it's, well, this is what I'm gonna get done when, um, the dates might fluctuate because we all know that in process things take different amounts of time. You might change your mind. So it's a living document. Nothing is solidified, um, but it's a good scaffolding and kind of um, structure for you to work in over the year because we do want to make sure that your work has vigor and weightedness because it deserves that. Um, so it's a really it's a really great prep into the to the year. So over the year, you will um, do an independent project and that's asking questions that are interesting to you, researching and research can be from being in the lab, doing lab work um, to reading a bunch of poetry, depending on what you're interested in. Um, for some, it's in getting in the dance studio and creating choreography and what that type of research in your body is like. Um, and then the biggest part of Div 3 is finding some way to document that process. And it can take a few different uh, areas of documentation. It can be from writing, it can be from videography, it can be from photos, it can be um, from you presenting. Um, and then the great thing about it is there's this added step of, well, what do you do with that knowledge? How is it accessible? So you've, you've done the process, you've done the research, you have 
gotten the answers or even more questions. You've created new knowledge, you've discovered, you've documented it. And now where does it go? Because knowledge doesn't serve us if it's not being shared. So Hampshire really tries to find ways to share that knowledge, even if it's just within the campus. Um, you, some students do a presentation, some students do a whole performance, some students make a documentary and it's screened. Um, some students do a traveling show throughout the Pioneer Valley. So it really can take form in so many different ways. Um, and I'm gonna lead on, uh, lean on Bernadette to kind of maybe give us some examples of some great div projects that really resonated with her. Excellent, thanks, that's fabulous. Um, one of my favorite recent Div 3 projects was a student who was studying the history of Mexico in connection with Latin America and Central American countries. And additionally, he was studying the sculpture and the art within those communities. And so for his Div 3 project, while he continued to research the history and dive into that area of his research, um, he also was working on sculptures that were very specific to each of the historical periods that he was studying. And so part of his research was also the art and how he was going to utilize art to represent the um, culture between those uh, different countries, how the different time periods and eras, whether it was political or cultural, were all interactive. So he created a gallery show that allowed him to express the history that he understood through sculpture. And so while those normally don't seem like areas that might go together, his art was very representative of what he studied in um, the historical aspect. Um, one other one which I always think is really intriguing was a student who was in El Salvador. She was actually studying something totally different than what she ended up coming home to do. But while she was in El Salvador, she had gone up into the mountains and she realized that families, especially women, were not getting clean medical care while they were getting home doctor visits or home um, health aid visits. And what was happening is folks actually needed to be on the ground in order to get any kind of um, medical care. And so she came back and worked with an engineering student and developed a medical table that could be folded down and um, put into a backpack basically or devised into its own backpack system. And additionally, most important, <clears throat> excuse me, was that she utilized bicycle parts, knowing that bicycle parts are most accessible in emerging countries in a way that um, maybe some other more standard things might be available in the US, they wouldn't necessarily be available other places. And so not only did she develop this table, she also um, actually allowed the engineering student to take it to the next level. And during his Div 3 work, he continued to refine it, did other things with it, and um, actually made it open source so that anybody who had access to bicycle parts could actually replicate this table. And um, that was definitely a really strong example of taking knowledge and bringing it back into the community. Anything else? Do you want to add anything to that, Kira? Hi, so sorry, my partner just came home. So I'm trying to get the dog out so we don't have interruptions with barking. Um, but we were just talking about Div 3 and um, those were some great examples. I do know that something you touched on that I think is a huge driving point for Hampshire um, is that because you're creating your curriculum and you're kind of taking charge and ownership of your um, you're learning, you get to, to make those connections that aren't necessarily seen as connective, like art and history, although we have art history, but really thinking about it in new and creative ways um, and really advancing those questions. Um, but to kind of wrap things up, because I know we're running short on time and I wanna leave time for questions um, and I'll let Bernadette kind of talk about the admissions process. One of the things I love about Hampshire is how we really have this underlying entrepreneurship Sorry, did you? Kiara, you may have froze, and I'm not sure if it's just mine or yours. So I'm going to dive in. Can you hear me now? 
I can hear you. I, I don't feel frozen, but I okay. might be it might not be you. I think it's me and I'm going to move myself. Um, I actually am afraid to do that because of my screen share. So I'm going to screen share uh, for another minute and then we'll, I'll move areas if I need to. Great. Um, if you can hear me, I can hear you. You don't look mute, um, frozen. So great. Perfect. Great. All right. Um, so would you like me to dive into the admissions process? Yeah, why don't you go ahead and do that? <laughs> All right, I had missed that last part you said, sorry. Um, so a few things to know about our admissions process. Number one, we're on the Common App. We do not charge an application fee. We try to make it simple, especially for all of you who are seniors right now. We really want to recognize what a challenging year your junior year was, what a challenging beginning you've had to your senior year. Um, there's just been a lot of uncertainties. So what we've actually done is tried to decrease the number of uh, the number of requirements we have for you. So this year on the Common App, we're asking you to do the Common App essay and we have a supplemental essay you're welcome to fill out. It used to be required, it no longer is. Um, additionally, we are asking for two letters of recommendation, one from a teacher, one from a uh, um, college counselor. We know sometimes the counselors are not having um, quite as much time as they would like. Please let us know if you're running into any trouble with that because we know so many counselors doing way too much this year. Please communicate with your counselor for your area. Um, and actually in Illinois, it's Kiara, so that makes it easy. For a lot of the Midwest, it's Kiara. Um, she's covering all those areas, so she's happy to um, give you any support that you need. Um, we also do recommend, if your parents are interested, your parents are actually invited to write a letter of recommendation, which is pretty unusual in most college applications. But our students tend to be students that are outside the box thinkers. They um, often are doing some really interesting things, but because they're high schoolers and they're doing it, they think it's common. So it's not always that common. Have your parents write a letter. They're their, your biggest cheerleader. Let them tell us a little more about you as well and these extra things that you might have done. Um, on your application, when you're listing your activities, list everything. Tell us things you've done in school, things you've done in your community, things that you've done for um, a religious organization or if you're part of Scouts, if you are volunteering somewhere. Really tell us everything about you. We look at everything. We are not looking just at your um, grades. Just like I said, we give narrative evaluations. We're actually looking at you as a whole person rather than just your letter grades. Um, additionally, you're welcome to uh, uh, submit, sorry about that. Um, you are welcome to submit any kind of portfolio. It can be artwork, writing, it can be links to or performance, it can be um, any type of submission, it does not have to be directly connected to what you think your area of study may be. We're really interested to know who you are, what your hobbies are. Again, students that come to Hampshire, they tend to have more than one interest. Not everybody, but it really gives us a feel for who you are. Um, something that is super exciting, especially this year with all of the challenges that people have had with SAT and ACT scores, we are completely test blind, but we have been test blind for five years. So we are really confident in reading applications and not needing those SAT or ACT scores. We have been leading the pack in this field for a really long time. We're actually very excited that a lot of other colleges this year are making them test optional. I believe there are a few others that are making it test blind, but there's not a lot of us out there. And um, for some schools, they're not sure how to work that out um, within their own systems, it's not a hold up for us. We are really confident in understanding who you are as a person and um, those SAT scores don't mean anything to us. They are completely blacked out when we get your application. So if you have other schools that are requiring them, don't even send them to us because I believe you only get three schools that you can send them to for free 
don't list us because we are never going to see them. Um, again, just to make that last point, your application to us is a reflection of who you are as an entire human being. Everything that's in there, we look at and we look at carefully. Many applications are looked at within five minutes. A um, group will look at it. They'll make a very quick decision and move on. So put everything in there. But I can tell you, Hampshire does not spend only five minutes on applications. We spend more time. We talk about it. We want to know who you are. We'll reach out to your guidance counselor or your college counselor if we're feeling like information is missing because we really want to know you as a whole person. Kiara, do you want to add anything for me? No, I really just agree with everything you said. We really look at it holistically. Um, and I think this is like, you might be getting to this, but we also don't require, but we love having interviews that are led by our student interns in the office. And again, this is just to reiterate the reason why we have so many opportunities um, for different platforms is we know that everyone um, shows their best selves in different ways. So if you're a talker, an interview might be great. If you um, are more reserved, it might be great to submit a portfolio. Maybe you want to do both, but we want to give you the opportunity to show us you in so many different lights because we know you're more than just what you're going to study. We know that you are a whole person and we really believe that um, and we want to foster that in our application reading process as well. Excellent. Um, last point to touch on that is definitely important and I really want students to know this. Um, we do look at both your FAFSA, oh man, I'm having trouble with that word today. It's the third time I've struggled on it, as well as the CSS profile. The CSS profile is what we use to offer um, merit awards for every student. So if you are um, leaving that out, we actually cannot finish your uh, financial aid package. So I highly encourage you to fill that out, send it along as quickly as you can because when we do our acceptances, we do send that package at the same time. You don't have to wait for it. We try to make it as simple as possible for you. Um, additionally, every student that comes to Hampshire does get a merit award and um, while the website says it usually ranges between $2,000 and $22,000. The average is more like ten dollars to $18,000 for most students that come in. And there are no separate applications for that, that actually we utilize the um, other financial aid paperwork in order to do that. Um, Hampshire does meet about 95% of demonstrated need. And so um, again, when we went test blind, we really increased the diversity in our school. We increased um, the ability of other students who might not test well. And also by doing that, we have opened our doors and created a campus or and continuing to create a campus where we have a lot of voices at the table and we can be very diverse. And that is something that we take a lot of pride in. Um, I'm going to stop my screen share here and see if there are any questions um, that we can answer for you. And I will start um, by answering what type of campus is it? So our campus is actually a very rural campus. Um, we have 800 acres, we have a working farm. We have a very special type of pig, which I always forget their name of, um, but we actually breed a, an heirloom type of pig that uh, some of our students actually do research and study. And so it can be a work study for them. It can also be part of their research opportunities. Um, also, being that we're a rural campus, we have committed to being a green campus. And so we have uh, multiple solar fields. We have um, two living buildings on our campus. One is owned by Hampshire. One is a community building that is owned by the Hitchcock Center for Environmental Studies. And um, there are only 24 living buildings in the world. And we had number 17 and 19, I believe, on our campus. Um, the Kern Center, the RW Kern Center, is a really beautiful building if anyone is interested in environmental studies. It's a great building to learn about. Um, Kiara, do you have any questions that you're seeing there? Um, one of the questions that I had received is talking about AP classes, IB classes, and how did those credits transfer um, when they're applying to Hampshire? 
Excellent. Um, so um, we do accept AP and IB classes. We usually apply them to your first year where you can, instead of taking electives in addition to those first year seminars, we apply those to those uh, first year classes. And that means you can actually usually take an advanced standing class, either an upper 100 or 200 level class, which gives you a little more opportunity. Um, I believe the I the AP test scores need to be four or five in order for them to count. And um, we also do encourage students that are dual enrollment students to um, apply those credits that you already have. If there's too many credits, we actually bring you in as a transfer student, but it depends on the experience that you're looking for. If you're looking for that first year experience, sometimes we can work that out with you. Um, Another question I have here is, can five college professors, five college consortium professors be on your advising committee? Yes, as a matter of fact, I was talking to a student earlier who has three advisors. One is a Hampshire uh, professor, and then the other two are actually from two separate colleges, one from UMass and one from um, Smith College, I believe she said. And so again, our faculty is really collaborative, even with the other colleges, making it really easy for you to um, feel supported while not feeling smothered by their advice. Um, Kiara, next one. Yep, I have a question about um, narrative evals and grad school. Um, and so I actually don't mind answering this because I actually have um, some statistics pulled up that I think are really fruitful to understanding how Hampshire does um, or our students do after they've graduated. Um, so something to know is that 65% of our alums earn an advanced degree within 10 years. Um, and Hampshire is also in a top 3% of US colleges. Um, that have, I thought it was in PhDs, but it says in this regard. So what I understand is that Hampshire I, overall just does really, really well in having um, students uh, complete or attend um, master's programs in higher education after master's as well. 88% um, of our alum uh, land a job or in grad school within six month, months of graduating. Um, and that could be also just termed as preferred placement as well. So it can be from a job to being in a nonprofit to being um, in a, in grad school. Um, and that's really strong for a small college, like 88%. And obviously I'm standing here today in a, in a preferred position of working for the college. So I definitely stand by that. Um, and then something else is one in four graduates start their own business or nonprofit organization. And I think this was touching on what I was talking about earlier about there's just this entrepreneurship and innovativeness that's weeded in throughout the whole process of Hampshire um, that we really let you have ownership of your education and um, allowing you to craft your education. Um, and so in terms of narrative evals, it's again, I think Bernadette talked really well about this as well earlier that um, it allows for grad schools um, and employers to really get into your mind and see how you engage with questions. Um, when you get to grad school, it's not just about learning foundational information, but it's building that. Um, and Hampshire kind of already has you thinking critically. And so being able to see that in your narrative evals allows them to um, accept you, I think, um, even more, more wholeheartedly because they actually know you a little bit more than just a letter grade. Excellent, thanks. Um, I'm gonna answer one last question here, and that is, what if I choose to change my area of study? That is so easy at Hampshire. If you are um, at a more traditional college, usually you're going under, you, you sort of have to say what you want to study and you are kind of locked into that until you extricate yourself from that. At Hampshire, we allow you to shift, pivot, um, really look at the types of learning that's important to you. And rather than us saying, if you want to study economics, you have to take these four classes, choose from these three electives, and then you must take, you know, something within these areas. We actually say, what do you want to study? Explain to us why it's important. How would you like to go about that? 
what learning activities, not just classes, but learning activities are important to you. And what Kiara had mentioned in Div 2, those internships, research opportunities, all of that, really important. And by learning those, oftentimes our students do want to pivot, shift, and we encourage that. And often what happens is they're not giving up something, but they're layering something else on top of that, history and art. But I see that we're out of time, so I'm gonna stop there. We've come right to our 45 minutes. And thanks for joining us. It was really wonderful to have you here. And feel free to reach out after if you have questions as well. Thank you two so much. So I'm going to pull this up here. Are you able to see the screen? It's just black. It's just yep, cool. there it is. Now it's up. Perfect. Okay. Thank you all for joining Hampshire. This was an amazing presentation. Once we close down, please take a quick survey. And then you can also get on IACAC.org for more uh, sessions like these. It's a great way to, to, you know, go through this college search process from your couch. And then additionally, this will be recorded. So um, get on the website and check it out again and check out these awesome facts that, that, that they share with you. Kiara, Bernadette, thank you so much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.